So I'm here with Caprice and her lovely mother, and they are 11 weeks from Caprice's third revision rhinoplasty, which we um, had to do a kind of big reconstruction on because her cartilages were all basically messed up. Um, mm -hmm. And she ha was having really bad nasal obstruction from a deviated septum, both the cartilaginous portion and the bony portion. So uh, Caprice is now 11 weeks and it's really had an impact on her life that both her family and uh, she has no have noticed, but I'm gonna let them tell you how, how it's been. Yeah, overall, I'd say um, I'm a lot happier. And I'm a lot more motivated to do things. Um, I feel like beforehand, I already wasn't happy with the look of the nose and the breathing on top of that just added to it. I wasn't getting a lot of sleep. I was really unhappy. I was irritable. Um, I was just I was just dragging. My day felt like it was dragging. So eventually when the breathing did get fixed and then on top of that, the, the look of it overall, it just adds to how I'm feeling now, which is, you know, overall quality of life, energy is better. I'm getting up um doing things about my day um the breathing is amazing i'm sleeping through the night instead of constantly getting up to blow my nose to try and get some kind of air in and um as the swelling goes down the overall look of, of the nose just looks i'm really happy with it with the way it looks i would say it's like it's a complete different person it's like night and day yeah she used to uh be in her room and wherever there was a, a, a couch or a chair or something where she could lay down, she laid down. Uh, she made noise when she slept. You could hear like a, a snoring sound. It was not like snoring, but like a whistling sound. And she was not, she was not happy. And um, she didn't have any energy to to go anywhere and right now ever since the surgery i i have a different daughter i have my old daughter back like she used to be she she's she's happy she, when i when i propose let's go somewhere she she wants to leave she's joking with her sister and it's that it, it's just it's a a pleasure seeing her and she has goals now she she put all the goals aside she procrastinated now she has goals yeah. and she she said hey i want to continue mm -hmm. uh with my with my uh college i want to get an even higher degree you know so uh i i would say this this was a life-changing moment yeah. for her and that decision uh, to come to you was the best decision oh, yeah. ever. I agree. And I, I, I can really say, do your research. And, um, and we're really thankful to you. You really gave my daughter <laughs> a, a, a new, a new life. Yeah. And thank you so much for that. Oh, it was my, it was my pleasure. You guys are wonderful. Um, and I'm so happy to hear that Caprice is doing so much better, breathing better and you know, really taking it into impacts of her life. And Caris, one thing you actually mentioned early on in the process, but it's really, I wanna, it's really interesting, is how you felt your old nose when the rhinoplasties were done, it changed your character and it didn't actually fit with you, your sister, your ethnic background. Um, yes. And now that was actually something you wanted. And the reason I bring this up is because that's very, in, in uh, the LA population, because you guys are in Georgia, uh, mm -hmm. the LA population, people always want to maybe get a certain type of nose. But for you, it wasn't about that. It was about actually being able to fit into what your nose should fit in your face or, or how, how, how was that? Yeah. I think that when I had my, my first rhinoplasty, I don't think that like the doctor was actually listening to what I really wanted. I didn't want to look like someone else or trying to fit in somewhere. I wanted to still look like me. I wanted to still recognize myself when I looked in the mirror. And after that first rhinoplasty, I felt like I was driving farther away from what I felt looked like, what I was supposed to look like. So when I initially started talking to you, I felt like you were in my head. Like you knew exactly, like I'm trying to look like Caprice. I don't look like somebody else. So I feel like you finally, in a way, gave me back the nose I had before initially, that, <coughs> but still refined it to what I wanted. So I'm happy that it, it fits my face and I still recognize like this is me, this is what Caprice is supposed to look like. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I really think that 
the after the first rhinoplasty, the the nose was what he thought should be there. Yeah, because he was not listening to her nor me because we we both looked at each other and said, okay, did we not communicate the right way? And uh, and then after. Uh, before the second one, we showed pictures what it what we meant, and um, no matter how we explained it, he would not. I, I can't say he wouldn't listen. He could not um, pinpoint exactly uh, pinpoint or or could find that that uh, particular point what we talked about. Yeah. And it's not a uh, one nose fits all thing. You know, I mean, just because there's a trend. Uh, for something that doesn't mean that the person that comes to your office is following that trend. You know, it's it's for for many other reasons. It's for yeah. breathing. Yeah. So he would uh, just not not listen. Yeah. And um, and when we tried to contact him after the second one, he wouldn't even call us back. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, that's one thing I always try to do is communicate with you guys, and and, yeah. and I'm glad I'm glad I was able to get, exactly. to get everyone. Oh yes, yeah. you just hit it right on the nail. It was perfect. <laughs> Thank you.